This is the webinar introducing you to the mobile version of the Time and Material Billing Program. I'm going to cover three different topics today. I'm going to just spend a few brief minutes on things you need to have set up to use the mobile app. And then we'll actually show you some examples of how you would input your material and labor into the app onto the mobile device. And then we'll show you how that information gets sent from the field on the mobile device back to the desktop version. One of the important things to understand about this mobile app is that it's really designed as an extension of the desktop version. It works in conjunction with the desktop version. It can be used independently. You can use the, the mobile app in the field without even having a Wi-Fi connection to create a new job or to record the material and labor. But at some point you need the, the Wi-Fi connection to, to sync it, to send it back up to the cloud so it gets to your desktop version. Okay, so let's start with the, just a couple setup things. This is the screen you see in the TNM desktop version. The version number you should have if it's under help and about, it should be either 6.31 or 6.32. That's the current version of the desktop version. The unlock codes apply in a couple situations. When, when you purchase the, the desktop version, there are unlock codes you enter that basically give that uh, give you access to the program on that computer that you're unlocking it on. There's also unlock codes for the mobile version. So those are separate. Um, there's no charge or cost for the for the mobile app as long as you're either within your first year of owning the TNM program or you've paid your support on the TNM billing and we'll give you the mobile unlock codes here that come out of the same place. So those need to be done. Uh, uh, you can either email to the support department, they'll send you the unlock codes or you can just call in and they'll give them to you verbally and you can and you can type them in. So you need to have the program unlocked, the TNM program, and you need to have the mobile features unlocked as well. And that should be it as far as that part of the setup. Okay, so let's just go in and do a job. Now at this point again the job can be created on the desktop or in the field. We're going to do it on the desktop because probably the more typical scenario is where a customer calls you, someone creates the job on the desktop version. So the job, just like the any situation, needs a, a name. We're just going to call it TNM Mobile Demo. It needs a customer. Now, when I come down here to the customer name, if there's anybody here, I can select them, or I can come down here and add a new one. I'm just going to select the ABC company. Now, under work information, I can type in what was requested by the customer. And I can either paste that in now or paste it in later. I'm just going to hit send to cloud. So at this point, it's going to access the setup, anybody you set up as a user on the TNM mobile version. So I've got just one user. I'm going to check them. Hit send to cloud. I'm going to choose high priority and hit OK. Now, while that's being sent to the cloud, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit here. Under the mobile tools, you can upload the data. You can set up yourself in a password here. And what that does, and I've already done this, uh, I've it uploads the entire TNM database to the mobile version, to the mobile app. It can upload your customers and your work order templates. So I've already done that. So when I open up the mobile app in a few minutes, all my current materials, my current customers, and my work order templates are already going to be there. Now, under mobile user maintenance, that's where you set up your users. So I've got just one user. Uh, the, the user has a name, they have an email address, they have a PIN number, and they also have the option to either let that user see prices or not. So some customers don't want their technicians to see the prices. They don't have to to do the do the input of the material and labor. If you want them to be able to do an invoice in the field, or if you're just not concerned about them seeing the prices that you're charging the customers, then leave that set to yes. Okay. So that's really what the mobile user maintenance is about, is setting up your users. Let's flip back there one more time. And you can have as many users as you want. 
at this point, and now I'm going to switch over to the mobile app. I've got a little utility program that shows me what's on my mobile device. So I'm going to bring that up right now. Okay. So now that I've sent the, the mobile version a job, it'll pop up automatically on the screen on the mobile device. So you just tap on OK. Come down here to the bottom and tap on where it says Pending Jobs. And there's the job that I just sent to the cloud, which pops up in the mobile device. So I've got three work order forms to pick from. Those are, just as a reminder, the work order forms. The, this is the hard copy version of it that's coming up on the, the device that you see on the screen right here. So I'm going to use the one called Brian. And again, it's going to have the same items that are on the work order form that we, uh, that we have on the, on the desktop. So to go into the input mode, you just tap on data up at the top here. There's the EMT category that's on the work order. You tap on that, tap on the size, and you put in the quantity. I'm going to put 100 feet. Hit OK. This little back button up at the top brings you back to the main categories that are on your work order form. There we go. So if I want a coupling, I just come down here to couplings. Click on the coupling. Put in the quantity. Right there. We'll put in 10 couplings. And you can just keep inputting from the work order form. Now, I find I think most people are going to find that looking up items in the in the database is much easier. Now, you can tap on this little stack of disks here and get the entire TNM database here. Or I think the search feature is really the easiest way to go. This little magnifying glass here. So if I want a connector, like a three quarter inch connector, I'm just going to type in a couple letters here, C O N N. Then I can just scroll down here a little bit. And you'll see three-quarter inch set screw steel connector right there in the middle. So I'll just tap on it, put the quantity, I'll put in 10 of those, go on to the next item. Again, you can just clear this search field. If you want a strap, just STRA. Scroll back up a little bit, you'll see a three-quarter inch one-hole strap. Just tap on that. Put in 15 of those. So this search feature, I think, is really nifty. When you look for THHN wire, you just type in THHN. And only you have three characters in there. And right down here is the 12 stranded. You just tap on it. Put in your length and move on to the next item. Remember the cut-in box we had to, or the pull box is better, the one we had to search for? Just type in pull, and there it is right down at the bottom. Hit OK. If I want to search for a cut-in box, again, you can clear that field. Three letters, and it's right there. So looking up anything that's either on the work order form or in the TNM database is really simple. If it's not in the TNM database, you can always add a temporary item. If you go back one step here, one more time to the main categories, there's a little plus button up in the top right. That's to add a temporary item. Again, these three buttons are important up here. The plus button lets you add temporary items in the fly. A little stack of disks lets you look it up from the database and the magnifying glass is a search option. So I'm going to hit the plus button. I'm going to add two items here. I'm going to put in a widget. So these are items typically that we don't have pricing on that will need to be handled on the desktop version when we send it back through the cloud. I'm going to put in five widgets. I'm going to add another temporary item here. It's going to be a Hubble. 
Again, we'll leave the price at zero. We'll put in a quantity in of five and hit OK. So we need some labor here. Again, we can use the little magnifying glass to search. Just a couple letters here, like for journeyman, J-O, and there it pops up. We can put in the hours. We can put a note in with who did the work. And even the day they did the work. And hit OK. So there's all our material and labor. When we're done inputting, you can use this little back button up at the top to get back to the main, main screen. And then you can go to summary up at the top right to see all the materials and labor that have been input. So there's all the quantities. There's the total down at the bottom. So at this point, if it was an estimate, you could get the customer to sign off and be ready to go and do the job right there. If it's just uh, needs to be billed to the customer, you can still click on sign and post. And then the customer can sign off and then hit post. So that syncs it automatically back to the cloud. Now, you can still come back tomorrow or later in the day and keep inputting material and labor to the job. But if it's completed, all we need to do is go back to the desktop and, and bring it up to, for, to, to finalize the invoice. So we're going to switch back to the desktop version here. OK. Now, it will pop up here eventually, but if you go to the little button that says Jobs Inbox and hit Check Cloud, give it a second or two, one more time there, there it is. So there's the job that just came back from mobile device, and we're going to hit, we're going to double click it. So there's two items that need to be dealt with because they didn't have pricing. When you hit edit, it needs to know whether it's a material or a labor item, so I'm classifying it as material, and that way it'll apply sales tax if that's what your setup does, which as we said, we're about $10, although our actual cost is eight. It's gonna mark up from the $10. So this other item I'm gonna look up in Epic, so when I hit edit and tell it it's a material item, you can go down to database import. Now, I've already looked up that item in Epic, but if I had to start from scratch, I'd go to Manufacture, Hubble, Hubble Wiring Devices, and then look up by catalog number. And we're going to export this item by hitting the third button from the top right. We'll hit Save, close it. Okay, so it looks like everything's done. We're going to hit Save. We're going to approve it. And now it's ready. So if I go back up here under my previous jobs, that'll be the one that's the most recent. That's the one we just did. So at this point, I can print it just like I would from whether I input it on the desktop or whether it came from the mobile app. And that's what it's going to look like. Now just a quick little edit here on the, the labor. I'm going to tell it to print that note. I'm going to edit a little bit. So now when I print the invoice, so you'll see the note attached to the labor, and you'll see the signature down here, which is now part of the invoice you would send to the customer. So again, this can be saved as a PDF file, sent out electronically, totally paperless. I see I also forgot the work performed. That's easy enough to go back and get. <clears throat> Just going to hit paste and save print and preview. Okay, that's going to wrap it up here. I don't see any more questions. I'm going to 
go ahead and close the webinar.